Welcome to the ASP.NET Web API Tutorial. In this tutorial, we will learn what a Web API and RESTful service is. Going forward, we will learn how to build a Web API using the framework which is provided by Microsoft. At the end of this course, you will be able to build simple to complex Web APIs that can be secured using either basic or digest authentication. You will also be able to learn and implement to call web API from various clients and host it on various systems. So let's look at the agenda before we jump into the course. We'll start with the introduction which would cover as to how web API was evolved and the need for it, basically the history of the web API and the prerequisites that would be required for you to start on with this course. We will then move on to understand the web API architecture simultaneously also covering the HTTP protocol and the RESTful web services since that is the base on which the web API is built up. Going forward we will implement our first hello world application and run it to see the actual output using a web API. We will then go on to cover the various features and the various framework components of the web API which includes the routing, the controllers, the actions. The web API provides a number of extensibility points in the form of message handlers and filters which would be covered up later in the later part of the course. Finally, the course would be wind up by some other features which includes dependency injection and hosting. And lastly, a very important aspect of any application which is the security. So let's move on to the first chapter of introduction. So what exactly is the ASP.NET Web API? Well, it is a web framework that is built on top of Microsoft.NET 4.0. So if you see, this framework is available only from framework 4.2 and wasn't available in the previous future, previous versions. This means that it is relatively new technology. It implements the HTTP protocol, which is the hypertext transfer protocol and can be used to build or consume a HTTP service. So for those who are not conversant with HTTP and REST, please do not worry. Just remember these things for now and we will cover up this in more detail towards the next chapters. So the first version of the Web API project was released in August 2012 along with Visual Studio 2012. So this is the tool that we would be using for creating Web APIs. This was released along with the ASP.NET MVC. So for all those who are familiar with ASP.NET MVC would find Web API to be kind of on the same lines and on the same ideas. So Web API is used for building RESTful services and it is very easy to build RESTful services using it. It can be used to create a powerful HTTP API which is capable of taking advantage of all the richness of the HTTP. This includes the content negotiation, caching, concurrency validation and so forth. Web API is consumed by a wide range of clients. So your client can either be a desktop application, it can be a mobile application, it can be a web application as well. For that matter, it could be another service as well. So you see, Web API is allowed to be used in a wide range of clients. Now, a very important and advantageous aspect of Web API is that it is an open source project. So, it was one of the first Microsoft projects to run completely as an open source project. And you can provide contributions and fixes for it. It has fully engaged with the community and constantly receiving feedback. The team has been listening carefully to what the community has been saying and it keeps making additions as and when required. So now that we know in brief what exactly a web API is, let's understand its history. So why did the web API actually came into the picture? So for that, we have to understand what all went 
before it. Initially, soap was considered as a standard for exchange. So soap is nothing but the simple object access protocol. It was designed to solve the problem of hybrid platform enterprises where each system used a proprietary means of communication and was unable to connect to other systems. SOAP proposed the use of HTTP as the transport mechanism for sending and receiving XML. So to support SOAP, Microsoft introduced what we know as the ASP.NET Web Services. So the ASP.NET Web Services could be used for creating applications for SOAP data exchange. This is nothing but the ASMX services that we used to implement with versions of framework .NET 2.0. I'm sure many of you all might have been implementing web services using the .ASMX versions. But if not, this is a knowledge aspect for you.